Hello guys and welcome to this new random coding session. Um, the goal of the random coding session actually is to share with, uh, with the world when I find something really interesting and uh, remarkable and useful while working on my project. So today I want to share with you the, the, the incredible power and uh, the magic of the WebSocket world. What is a WebSocket and what is a socket.io? Actually, it's a communication technology. It's an advanced communication technology that changed the way web applications communicate. Unlike traditional HTTP requests, which are unidirectional and stateless, uh, WebSocket and Socket.io enable a persistent full duplex connection between the client and the server. So it means that the data actually can flow in both directions in real time and they can create dynamic, interactive, and responsive web application. Actually, it's like uh, the client uh, is always uh, listening the server for any event communication and also the server is listening to the client. So it's like a, a full open and persistent communication. Let's see the difference between the traditional request and the WebSocket. So in a typical web communication, the client sends a request to a server and the server respond with data. This follows a request response pattern, really classic, really common. It's really hold system and where the client initiates a communication and waits for the response and then repeats the process when needed. But with the WebSocket, actually, the WebSocket is established a persistent full duplex connection between the client and the server. So it means that the client and the server can send messages to each other at any time without having to wait for a request from the client. We don't need to resend the HTTP request and open the connection again because the connection is already open. Another important thing is about the real-time communication. WebSocket is vital for real-time communication applications where we need low latency and instant data update. Some example of real-time communication can be like chat applications, instant messaging, group chats, online collaboration tools, online gaming, multiplayer games. For example, trading application, financial application, stock market update, financial data visualization, and collaborative document editing. The benefit of WebSocket, first of all, is the low latency. WebSocket uh, reduces latency compared to the traditional HTTP pooling or long pooling methods. With WebSocket, data can be pushed to clients as soon as, as it's uh, available on the server, mi uh, minimizing delay is efficient, so WebSocket uses a single long-lived connection, and this efficiency is particularly valuable in scenarios with these frequent updates. Bidirectional communication, uh, WebSocket allows both client and server to send data to each other, reduce server load, since a WebSocket connection remains open, server can handle a large number of clients with fewer resources compared, compared to traditional HTTP connection, it's also improved scalability. WebSocket can be used in a load balance environment to distribute client connection across multiple servers, making it easier to scale real-time application. WebSocket also have cross-domain support, can work across different domains without running into cross-origin resource sharing, the classic course issues, and making it easier to integrate real-time feature into various web applications. I, I just introduced WebSocket and now I would like to dive into the socket.io. It's just a web socket, but the, the library make it really easy to integrate to our project. It works in uh, Next.js, it works in React, it works in any JavaScript environment in Node.js. We can find the official website is socket.io. This is the website. It's really clear and really complete. You can find all the documentation and understand in details how it works, all the server and client instance, how the events work and how to make, for example, connection to many servers. So it's really well documented. And uh, socket.io use, of course, WebSockets as a primary transport mechanism for real-time communication when available. Socket.io for example, if sometimes WebSockets are not supported by client server, can gracefully de degrade the other transport mechanisms such as long pooling, streaming, and ensuring compatibility across different environments. So, and that is an event-driven mechanism. So it means that you can define uh, custom events with listeners 
and both the client and the server side. This is really powerful because you can emit an event from the browser, from the client, so the server will get this event so it can initialize a new process and after can give back to the customer, to the client, uh, the response with data, like a normal HTTP request. But you can also emit an event from the server you can send to the client in any moment. You don't need the client request. This is the specialty of WebSocket. From the server, you can send a message directly to any client that is connected. You can, for example, broadcast message to many clients that are connected to the server, to a group of this client, using the room, using the namespaces. It's really, it's really powerful and they give you the possibility, give you the power to manage many connection and interact between them. Socket.io also introduced the concept of uh, rooms and uh, namespaces. Uh, the, this concept actually is uh, to organize and manage communication channels. Uh, rooms allow you uh, to group clients together, enabling uh, targeted broadcasting to specific groups of users. Namespaces provide a way to separate different parts of your application while still sharing the same underlying connection. For example, the namespaces can be used uh, to differentiate the connection between pages. Broadcasting, so broadcasting actually makes it easy to send multiple messages to many clients and you can broadcast the messages to all connected clients and also all clients in a specific room, for example. You can target like a segment of clients that they have a common feature with specific, for example, namespaces. And this feature is particularly useful for building chat application and live notification. Uh, another good feature is the cross browser compatibility. Socket.io is designed to work across different web browser and platforms, ensuring compatibility uh, and for a wide range of users, actually. Also bring a server side implementation, easy implementation. Socket.io can be integrated into server side frameworks such as Node.js, Express.js, Python, Ruby on Rails, and more. It provides server side libraries that allow you to handle incoming socket connection events and broadcasting on the server. Provide a client side integration, a JavaScript client li library that you can include in your web application. And this library enables the clients to establish a, man a manage a WebSocket connection and handle events. Another really interesting uh, feature is the middleware. So with the middleware, you can implement those, those functions that is uh, in the middle between the client, between the request and the response for handling, for example, authentication, authorization, additional pro processing of incoming socket connection and messages. And also scal scalability is another important <clears throat> quality of uh, socket.io it can be used in distributed system complex app uh, really complex application uh, and can be also highly scalable you can deploy multiple instances uh, of your server and use load balancer for example to distribute incoming uh, uh, socket connection make it suitable for large scale application i just introduced the theory of these uh, technologies uh, let's dive into the project and uh, and see something uh, practical. Okay, first of all, uh, I already connected to my application. It's a Next.js application in AWS, in AC2. So the first things we have to do is to install the depend the packages. So let's go to my, to my project folder. Okay, first of all, we install the socket.io that uh, is going to be we are going to use in the big backend, so in the Node.js environment, we can install with the npm manager. So npm install socket.io. So I need to legacy some peer because I need to, in my project, I have a, a little incompatibility with other packages. So I, I need to solve these incompatibilities, but uh, now I just want to focus on this. So we just force it. We wait for the installation. Okay. First package is installed. And now we install the client side package. Is net npm install dot io client 
I can see here depths. Okay, perfect. We install the packages. And uh, now we start also to, to build the client side and server side code. So we can start from the server side. You have to consider that WebSocket use uh, its own connection between the, the server and the client. So if you already have the, your application running on, for example, port 3000 with Next.js or in other port, you have to create another server connection and choose another port. You cannot choose the same port that uh, your application already use, because if not, you're, you're going to have a, a conflict between them. The Next.js application we run on the three, port 3000 for our WebSocket, we will use the 5000 port. Let's create our Node.js file, our JavaScript file that manage the connection on the server. So I already have a folder here. I can use this folder. We call it WebSocket. Uh, tutorial.js here we are going to write the code to create a connection on the server first of all we have to require from node.js the http model is a common model and is uh, fundamental to establish some http connection we declare it let's go instance can create a server require HTTP so after create server and we also need the instance from socket.io that is a server is also require socket.io so we we already import these two dependencies two libraries uh, we are going to create the server. So the server we can call HTTP server. And we use uh, this method create server. We activate this function. And also we need to create the instance IO. So we create a new instance, new server. We use a HTTP server that we. So here we can uh, include some options when we create this instance. Actually, I want to introduce from the beginning the course option. Because when you sometimes when you use a WebSocket, maybe you need to make uh, some connection with a different host. So we need to activate uh, the course. So it can authorize all the if you want to authorize all origin you just put this but if you have a special host you just put the, the name of the host here and uh, you can also specify the methods and the methods in our case will be just maybe get yeah and also use post that's okay we allow actually any course to our application and then we are going to create the server connection. We're going to create the listeners for the server connection. That is HTTP. Actually, it's the one that we already create. Listen. We use the port 5000. And the callback function give us the console log. We want to see on the terminal when it's connected. Just server is this the port five times. Here we go. So every time it's connecting and it's listening, we're going to log on the terminal. So in the middle here, we can integrate all the logics and the method that we need. First of all, we need to know when the WebSocket is connected from the client. And there is this event, this event when a new client activate a socket connection so we can use this at oh on event connection is the event and it's going to be sync with the callback that give me back the socket the socket object with all the 
information that uh, later we will see. So every time a client connect to my WebSocket, it will make the connection event and this listener will, will get the event and activate a callback function that give us a fast response and give us some information. So every time a new client may make a connection, the, the socket will generate a unique ID. So in this way, we can, for example, see the ID. And here we go. We already have all the, the basic to establish connection. So, is it? Let's remove it. Okay, so now we are going to the, integrate the, the front end, the client side uh, socket. So we create a new page in NextCanby, for example, the new route uh, tutorial, for example. And inside the tutorial, we are going to create page, page.js. The page is just a simple page of Next.js. We import the, we're going to create a, a component that integrate all the socket and the button and the example that we will see later. We can call a tutorial. We export the page default to make J, uh, Next.js to, to get it, a sync function, we call it page, we will also consider some params. This is a standard Next.js page and uh, return our component. Our component is tutorial. Here we go. We have our page. We are going to create the component. The component we create in the same folder that we already call tutorial comp tutorial comp.js and here we go this is the component so inside the component we are going to to integrate all the socket.io logics first of all it's going to be a use client so in next.js we have to specify that is a use client that is going to render on the client browser so in this case, uh, we import React because we're going to also import use effect and use state for the state management and this from the React library. We also have to import IO from the socket IO client. I already recognize. Okay. This is all the dependencies that we need. And we are going to create the component. Component is export default. We can also call tutorial. Should we call it tutorial comp? Okay. We need to put some props. We go. Okay, this is our component. First things that we have to declare is the socket. The socket is IO. If we live like that, it will make a, a, a connection to the port that uh, is already connected to the server. But we don't want to use the same port. We want to create another port on 5000 that we already specified on the server. So we need to uh to specify the host the ip and the the other port for the web for the socket connection of course you can activate other ports if you want but in this case just one is enough and you can also connect the socket to other server and the the course setting allow to connect also to other servers so i will get the i will take the ip from our from my ec2 instance so the ip is that one and the port is 5000. We have to put also HTTP. Here we go. This is the connection. You have to give us uh, like a, a function, a callback when the, uh, the page finished to render. So at the end of the rendering, uh, we, we activate this, uh, this function. So the function is uh, actually it's just a console log that gives us uh, information about the connection of the socket. 
which I will tell us when the socket connected. Because actually these make the connection. This is the initialization of the socket. But this gives us like a confirmation that the socket is... Uh, it this is a even listener, so it'll give us like uh, the confirmation that the socket is connected. So on the even connect, we'll have our callback function that will print on this on the terminal that the socket is is running. So console log. We can print all the socket object, or we can print just the socket ID. What we want. It's okay. We don't. Uh, we have to be careful also to don't forget to close the socket connection when we unmount the component. So if the customer close the page or go to another page and doesn't need the socket anymore, we need to specify it in the use effect. Actually, that we have to close the connection. So we use the return. Is a special feature that will uh, run this function where the component and mount in this case, in this uh, case, the, the tutorial, tutorial comp. Here I make a mistake, so it's not actually socket, but this IO from socket.client is what is nothing. <laughs> That's okay. We have this part, we return the, the disconnection socket dot disconnect we are sure it will disconnect and we just want that this you use effect run only once for each for each component mount so here we go we are ready to test if the web socket connect uh, between the, cl the client and the, and the server <clears throat> Okay, the first thing we have to do is to run the server file, the WebSocket tutorial JS. We already, we go in the WebSocket server and we run the WebSocket tutorial. Okay, so we can use, for example, nodemon WebSocket tutorial.js. So the server is listening on the port 5000. It's correct. And we start our next JS application to load the tutorial page we already are here and pm run dev we start the server in local host 3000 we open the browser on tutorial actually we didn't put anything here and yeah it's a mistake because we, at least we have to, to return something on the page for now we just return uh, this is my tutorial page. Okay, here we go. So we have something to display on the page. Here we go. We played it. Okay. We can see the page. We can see from the from the server that the connection is, is done and it shows us the socket ID. So this is on the socket ID from each connection. If we reload the page we will get another socket id every time i refresh the page i actually render more than one time so i will get more id and here we go we have a web socket connection already active let's see how to interact between the, the client and the server with some event i want to create in the client a button that we will use to send the event to the server like to just some style just to make it presentable it also eight up to just really fast styling to make it understandable okay click so i want to activate an on-click event. When I press the button, I want to send an event to the server. And I want the server manage this event, reply back to the client emitting another event so the client will get the event and do something else. And we want to put inside the button the some text. We will see. I want to put the 
um, the message from the server in the button. So first of all, I want to declare the function with send socket event. We declare the function here. This so event. So in socket.io, we can emit event from the client to the server using this method that is socket.emit where uh, the first argument we can specify the name of the event okay so from the server you have to specify this event to get it and we go we want to send a message the second argument is the data we want to send to the to the server data is hello server how are you hello server what we want is also to get a response back from the server we can specify here on use effect also, even listener, not only connect, but a new one that get the event from the server. So the method is the same, socket on. We will call the event from the server response event. And we want to activate a callback function with data from the server. So when I get this event, I activate this function. I want to receive the message from the server and put inside the button. So I want... The button cap, for example, have a default text like send, uh, send event. Send, when I press send the event to the server, give back the response and the text will be the content of the button. So we can put the content here. We will declare as a state. The state can be button com. We can declare also on the top. So the cost. So the state is button cont. The method to set the status button, set button count, use state. As a default, we can we can write send even, and this is the default content of the button. So we already set here button count. Okay. So when I get the even back from the server, I want to change the button with the message from the server. So we will use the set button con with the, the data. We want to set the, the content with the data. It's okay. We can put also, for example, received response from the server last. Here we go already set my buttons let's manage the server to emit the event so we say we have to get the event from the client so we always declare all the method the middlewares and everything inside the connection so inside the connection i want to get the the socket this is from the customer the socket uh, event uh, that we call my event and when I get this event, I also want to activate a callback function that reply back to my server. Okay. So you remember, you want to press the button, send the message to the server, get the event and get the message, reply back to the, to the client with a message that I want. The message that the client get will be the content of the button, the text of the button. So let's specify what we want to send back to the client here can be, for example, a socket dot emit. We call response event. Response event. We want to send a message just hello from server. Oh, we can see hello client because from the other side we say hello server. Okay. Okay. So we manage also this event from the servers. I think we already include all. So in the node mon, this is already updated and also from the client. So let's see. Let's see the page from the client. I send the event. Here we go. We receive the message from the server. We can see here, 
that I send the message. Let's restart and see again. So when I click on this button, send event from the browse from the client page, I will activate trigger on click. So I press this, I activate on click, activate this function, send socket event. The function will emit an event, my event with a message, hello server. Okay. So the server here, we get it. Let's show, let's show this message on our terminal so we can, we can see it. Let's see if we get this message. This is, we can remove the socket ID. We don't need any more. Okay. When I send either hello server, I get here this. This event listener will, will trigger this callback function that console log data and emit another event, response event, hello client. It will send the event to the client. The client will listen to this event with this socket on response event and activate also another function, a callback function that will trigger, will write a received response from the server plus data. The data is that one that we already specify here is hello client. So I, I, we will get this med message plus hello client here, receive response from the server, hello client. With the set button count, I will change the state. I change the, the, the value of button count and I update the button. So it works. Let's see another uh, feature that mm, is called acknowledgement that actually is a uh, it uses a callback function to get a response from the from the other side. Uh, it's the same. It's another way to use the same mechanism of uh, sending an event and get back a response. In this way, from the client, we send an event, and the server will get this event and respond back with another event that the listener from the client received. There is also another form we can. We don't need to send a new event. We just can use a, a callback function. Let's start from the from the server. So we don't want to. We want to get the <clears throat> event from the client. That is my event. But we don't emit this. We just send a callback function. We activate a callback function that send data back to the client. We leave like that. We that is going to be the the third argument. It's going to be argument one, argument two, and the callback function. The callback function is going to be here. Let's need this. We can specify, declare here the callback that send back some data. Can be, for example, an object that have a status. Okay. So what happened when I get this event? I trigger this callback function that send back this data to the client. But the client also have to change. When I push the button, I emit this event and it's okay, but uh, we need to change the listener. We don't, we are not waiting for a response event, but uh, we need to, this one we don't need anymore. We can leave here, but we have to transform the, the, the event emitter. So we don't, we also add more stuff here. Here can be the same. We can leave, for example, uh, just an argument can be A and B. So this is the name of the heaven as a, the first argument. The second and the third are two arguments. And the third one, uh, like in the server, have to be the callback function. The function that get back the data. So we declare as, as that. The response is the message from the server and we can directly trigger the button like the same mechanism as before and we say we want the data back actually it was an object remember it was an object from here and i want to check the status so we can just put here and here we go so if it works we're going to have the same result as before i trigger the i click the button and i will get back a receive response from the server okay and here we go. It works and is exactly the same result as before. So let's see other interesting feature. For example, we can delay the event emitter with a timeout in this form. 
like that before the event and this will uh, this will delay of five seconds the, the event so we can also we can also remove a listener with the socket dot off so for example we are in the server we have a listener listener that is my event we can put socket dot off after this so if we put like that also my event it means that after it trigger it also it will deactivate the listener so actually this will not work because i i desk i i deactivate soon after after the, the the declaration so when i deactivate i can also activate a callback function in the same form the same form as before we can put any logic inside here another we can also in some case we need to trigger the event only once so we don't use socket dot on but we use dot once it means that uh, it will listen the event only one time so in this case we are going to we are going to activate let's see if it triggers just once this is the first trigger this is the first trigger also the second trigger is okay because i reload the, the page actually but if we for example let's uh, build two buttons let's see if the second button will get the events i don't think it, it get it gets because we declare once so it only triggered the first button let's try if it's correct so this is the first the first trigger it will get both of course it will get both let's <laughs> let's declare two different states so in this way we can separate the logics button con2 set button con2 set event2 and here we go we can it's going to be sent socket event and socket event2 but it's the same event so let's see if the second one does will change this is the second one okay so if i trigger the first button it will socket dot once will get the first time but not the second let's see this one trigger and the second doesn't trigger so it works it works okay so another method is a removal listener we can decide at some point of our application to remove all the listeners so it's a method is really simple to apply you just socket dot remove all listeners, listeners like that yeah and we put inside just one argument that is the, the, name, the name of the event if we don't specify any argument it will remove all the listener of our application so let's see also another interesting feature that is the catch all listener this listener will catch any event emitted from the it works both in, at both side uh, on the server or on the client if we use here on the server we can get any event from the customer that is on any we specify like that it triggers a callback function that as an argument he will have the first argument we he will catch the event name and the second one is going to be any arcs of data that we send from the event emitter so if we console.log the even name we will see the name from the client so we want to send two different even names so my even one my even two let's remove this this callback this acknowledgement so we can okay let's see now we should get my even one and my even two we get my even one and my even two so it works so we can also use another method that is called prepend any and uh, actually the function the result is the same but we just prepend on the listener array directly so it's the same and we, we declare like that the prepend any and the form will be the same of this one so the difference between the first one and the second one that is the same result but this one will uh, prepend to the listener array of the application we can also switch off any catch all listener with the socket of any so in this way we 
deactivate on any event a, a listener. We can also have a, a special kind of listener for outgoing packet of data. It's called socket dot on any outgoing. So actually when we send the data, we divide in some packet and uh, for each packet, I will, uh, we will trigger this, this listener. This is like that. Take like that, it use the same logic of the, the previous one. We can also use prepend for any outgoing at the same way. It's going to be prepend any outgoing and with the listener. What if we want to catch any error inside this, this mechanism? We just use the simple try catch. So when I get this event, we can just try it's we put the code inside it and with the try and catch we can manage any error the callback will be the same so if it doesn't give any error the status is okay if we get the error we are going to catch the error and send back to the client at the same way so we will give back the error status uh, error we can put also her key so we will get back the, the specific of the her now let's see the last part of this tutorial that is, is also an interesting part and it's going we're going to discover practically what is it what is the broadcasting events and room so the broadcasting event i can share you the documentation so we can also see directly the broadcasting is the feature that allow us to send some massive messages to many clients that are connected to the application to the socket so we can decide for example from the server with the socket a to send a message to a group of customer or to all the customer or just some of them for example here we can decide to broadcast if we don't specify any customer in this way it's like socket broadcast dot emit it will emit the event okay with the message word to all the customer, to all the, sorry, to all the connected clients except the sender. So it's sending the message to all the connected people. The same with the acknowledgement, we can, we already see this part actually, we can send even with a callback function. We can use a room in this way, we, we want to emit message with a timeout of, of five seconds only to all the client that are included in the room one, two, three, only the connection inside the room will get this message, this event. In this way, we can send, for example, a broadcast message only to a specific socket. So if we have uh, more than one socket connection, more than one socket object, we can broadcast each socket, actually. We can use a nice space uh, that is similar to room, but is more like depending on the Actually, the namespace is a macro group and the rooms is a smaller group. We can shoot the, 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 the namespace and send the message only to them. And we can also, in certain cases, you want to broadcast to clients that are connected to the current server with a local. It would send, this is the situation where we have a multiple server connection with the multiple clusters, actually. Local will emit only to the server that we want. And this is, I think, all about broadca broadcasting event. And the room is the, something similar. We can group, we can put some socket inside a group and treat them as a room. And we can decide to, this is the method to join, okay, this socket to a special room. We can also iterate this, this join to many different socket and put all together in the same room. This method is really useful when you have to manage chat with many customer, with group, and is going to be really useful and it's and here we go when we add all the socket to this room we can emit some even only to this room there is also the accept method and it's really intuitive it means that we can emit this event to all except this room this is also nice because you can emit to several rooms at the same time and room one room two room three to all this room i make this event and it's also broadcast to a room from a given socket what we already see and I think that's all. We can also use the disconnection, is catching the event when the socket is disconnecting. Uh, <clears throat> when, when a socket is disconnecting, we can also see which rooms included the disconnection.
we have reached the end of this video tutorial and I genuinely hope you have enjoyed this content. If it has been helpful to you, please show your support by liking the video and sharing it with your friends on social media. If you haven't already, I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on upcoming lessons. Don't forget to check out my website, thevergolabs.com, where you will find a plethora of interesting programming content. You can also send me collaboration requests and explore all the programming services we offer. Your participation and support are crucial in my growing and to grow this community and providing you with even more valuable resources. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for being here with us and I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.